Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Monday. It is the second day of May, year of our Lord 2022. I do pray this finds you well this evening. It turned out to be a, a very pleasant evening. Hopefully it's going to warm up sooner rather than later. I know some farmers are just out working in the fields. I don't, you know, it's still quite wet out there, but they just, it's May. So the ground has got to be worked and where they can, and crops got, have, have got to be put in the ground. Um, so we will pray for favorable weather tonight, amongst other things as well. Remember, May 14th, which is a Saturday, we'll be having a fundraiser for the youth group. That's a trivia night. There's still a couple of tables available. Call the church office if you're interested in hosting a table. Um, it'll be a, a fun evening. The youth will be helping out with that, of course. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grants a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And we turn to the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, once again, following the daily lectionary, tonight reading from chapter 7, verses 1 through 17. After he had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him. For he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us your, our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore I do not presume to come to you. But say the word, and let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled, and turning to the crowd that followed him, said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. Soon afterward, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread throughout the whole of Judea, in all the surrounding country. And that is the Gospel of the Lord. So this finishes the sermon, and this is where the text picks up, that we heard over the last couple of days. And we hear he finished all these sayings, and he enters Capernaum. And we hear a, cent a centurion, this is the Roman, you know, uh, the Roman uh, um, uh, general or captain of a hundred, a centurion. And we don't know if that was the exact number or not, but that's his title. So he's a Roman. And he says, and this is important, he doesn't go. And we find out later he doesn't. He doesn't feel worthy to go. But he sends his servant who was sick and at the point of death. Uh, he, sends, uh, uh, he has a servant who was sick and at the point of death. And he, hears, he, he sends the elders of the Jews. Now remember what the Jews are. They are people called by God. They are people who have been circumcised into the covenant, uh, the, the circumcision made with hands, 
Uh, on the eighth day, all the males were circumcised, and that puts them in the covenant. Females are included in that, in that too, but the act was not done to them, of course. Uh, they're part of the, even though this is up north, um, they, are, they would occasionally journey to Jerusalem and sacrifice, particularly the Passover, things like that, Yom Kippur. And they are people of the promise. They are people who live under the promise. And like us, you know, baptized into his name, uh, baptized into his death and resurrection, our Lord's death and resurrection, we are Christians. Uh, they can approach the Lord. They do approach the Lord. So do we. By virtue of your baptism, by virtue of the blood of Christ, you have access to the Father. And you can appeal, pray, is the word we use, to the Father on behalf of your neighbors, on behalf of anything. You know, there's so many things we don't know what to do. Who knows how to raise people from the dead? Who knows how to cure illnesses? You know, um, I don't know how to do that, you know, but God does. You know, and we are invited, allowed, privileged, through the blood of Christ, to pray to the Father, and he does answer us. So we see that here. So he, this centurion sends the, the Jews, the elders, and they come to Jesus, and they plead with him earnestly, and then as he begins to approach, they, uh, the, the centurion sends his friends to Jesus, and they say, yeah, you, you know, don't, don't trouble yourself. I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. That's part of the Roman Catholic liturgy. It's actually a pretty nice part. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, I shall be healed. I see that they say that before the communion. It's kind of a nice sentiment. It's, it doesn't find its way into the Lutheran liturgy, but it, it, think about it. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. That's what, you know, that's, that's an honest statement when we walk into the presence of God in church. But only say the word and I shall be healed. And he says the word. The word is Christ. And we are healed. Uh, the word is the sacrament. And we are healed. So, do not trouble yourself. I'm not worthy to have you come to my roof. Therefore, I do not presume to come to you. But say the word and let my servant be healed. And he talks about having authority. He knows that Christ has the authority. Christ is the Son of God. And that's why Jesus you know, you know, turns to the crowd and he says, hey, as he marvels, this is what faith looks like. Faith looks like, you know, hearing what God says, knowing who Jesus is and saying, yeah, that's who I trust in. That's where I put my, you know, that's the basket I put my eggs in. It's, that's kind of a crass um, uh, analogy. But, uh, you know, do we trust the word or don't we? When we hear what our baptism does, what the Lord's Supper is, you know, we can sort of wiggle our way around it and, and think, oh, no, no, that can't be. You must have to do this. You must have to do that first. No, no. Only say the word, and I shall be healed. Baptism now saves you. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations. Baptize. How do you become a disciple? You're baptizing. And then, you know, you heard me. I say this all the time. You know, keeping, uh, teaching them to keep all things you know, that he has commanded you close, to guard those, to keep those. That we hear who he is. God so loved the world. That in this way, God loves the world, that he gives his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What do we know about so It's the word. He speaks. We listen. And we are healed. You know, we're always looking for lightning bolts and mountaintop experiences, and those things are few and far between. Yeah, sure, we have them once in a while. Uh, but they're fleeting. That's what makes them what they are. You know, we just live our simple, mundane lives. Most of us, even people who live, you know, we, at least our lives live these magnificent lives, you know, their lives can be rather mundane too. And eventually they're going to get sick and frail and not be able to enjoy the things that they enjoy, just like us. We're people born into the curse, going to die, live our lives by the grace of God. And that leads us to the next thing, you know, that, that Jesus indicates that he has the authority to do what he's doing and he raises this man from the dead. It's wonderful that it happens to be a widow, and this is her only son, her only means of provision. All right, now, granted, hopefully God's people would provide for her. There seems to be a great crowd following her. They know it's a desperate situation, and somebody would take her into her home. You know that, but the text doesn't say that. It just it just says, "Hey, okay, you know, um, there's this desperate situation, and God is there." And then notice what He does again: speaks to the corpse. And the corpse arises, begins talking, and he gives, Jesus gives the, what, uh, what was just a corpse, but now a living man, 
back to his mother. God speaks and we are healed. Never forget that. You know, stop looking for God everywhere except where he promises to be. In his word, the word of Christ, God speaks. And it is so. In the beginning was the word. You know, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens uh, and the earth. How? By speaking the word. God speaks, light is created. God speaks, we are created. In Christ, the word of God, God speaks. And in Christ, we are part of the new creation. Baptism now saves you. Never forget that. God speaks. His word is performative. It does what he purposes it. And that is good news. That is gospel for you. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, having been blessed by word and sacrament yesterday, as you came to us in the divine service, grant us by your Spirit faith to live in the promises of holy baptism and the promises of these gifts. Strengthen us as we go about our callings and our various vocations, that we may know that we are the salt and the light, and so spread that salt and light to our communities, our neighbors, our families, those who desperately need to hear it. Be with the unemployed and the underemployed. Grant them gainful employment and bless us as their neighbors that we may help them as you have helped us. We pray for the salvation and well-being of our neighbors, that they would come to know you and find peace and joy in you as we do. Bless our schools, colleges, and seminaries that maybe be, they may be faithful in raising up men and women who boldly proclaim your word in the various vocations for which you prepare them. Bless our government. Grant us a good government. People who are eager to do your will. Stop those who sow hatred and discord among us and seek their own glory. Stop those who foster violence in our communities and neighborhoods, our nation and the world. May your peace reign here and throughout the world. As always, we pray for those who are crying out to you. For Dave, Lucille, Dawn, Dennis, Betty. Tony and Nicholas, Jason, who remains hospitalized, dear friend of the congregation, we pray that you'd uphold him, place your healing hand upon him, be with his family as they care for him, and the nurses and doctors that they might be your instruments for his well-being. For, so, for Josiah, Joe, Dee, Dylan, Katie, Marge, Carrie, Julie, Jill, and all who are crying out to you. We pray for favorable weather for farmers, especially locally that they may go about the task of not only providing for their families and themselves, but providing food for your people. Grant us favorable weather that the crops may be placed into the ground and then by your gracious visitation grow. Heavenly Father, all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I do ask you to be with me as I deliberate the call to either remain here at Emmanuel and Rock Island or, or move to 
the saints and, and there uh, be the pastor of the saints at the church um, in Johnson City, Tennessee, Bethlehem Lutheran Church. We do pray that you bless us all with patience as I deliberate, that you grant me your wisdom um, and your guidance and that uh, everything that I would do would be pleasing to your holy name. Heavenly Father, again, all this I ask in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn 566, By Grace I'm Saved. By grace I'm saved, grace free and boundless. My soul believe and doubt it not. Why stagger at this word of promise? Has scripture ever falsehood taught? No, then this word must true remain. By grace you too will life obtain. By grace none dare lay claim to merit. Our works and conduct have no worth. God in his love sent our Redeemer, Christ Jesus to this sinful earth. His death did for our sins atone, and we are saved by grace alone. That stands as one and two of six of him, 566, by grace I'm saved. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.